Welcome! My name is Jeannie Dixon and I'm a watercolor artist. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Jeannie Dixon Designs. I'm excited to share some of my favorite watercolor tips with you today. This is video one of a four-part watercolor series. Today we're going to be talking about supplies. So if you're just a beginner, this is the best place for you to start your watercolor journey. Let's dive in! As a beginning watercolor artist, you can become a little overwhelmed by the amount of options that may be available to you. What you need to know first is that there are six essential materials and supplies that you will need in order to get started. These are paper, brushes, paints, a palette, water, and paper towels. Let's talk about paper. Paper comes in different forms. It comes in sheets, blocks, pads, and even cute journals. The thickness of watercolor paper is indicated by its weight, which is measured in grams per square meter or GSM or pounds per ream. The most common weights are 90, 140, and 300 pounds. 140 pound paper, which is 300 GSM, in my opinion, has a perfect thickness and is easily available. So when it comes to paper, the most important thing to remember is that the heavier the paper, the better it will be able to handle the amount of water without buckling or warping. The other important thing to consider when choosing paper is texture. Watercolor paper comes in three main textures or finishes. These are rough, cold, and hot. Rough, as you may have already guessed, is the one with the most amount of texture. It's perfect for certain techniques such as dry brush and expressive painting. Cold pressed paper has a semi-rough texture. It has a little more tooth to it and is considered by many artists the easiest watercolor paper to work on. And I have to say that I absolutely agree. And lastly, hot pressed. This paper is the least absorbent out of the three. It features an ultra smooth finish, which makes it perfect for ink and detail work. However, it can feel a little slippery when painting. Another tip is that when choosing paper, it's important that you check that it's acid free. This will ensure that your paper won't turn yellow over time. Now let's talk about brushes. Brushes also come in different shapes and sizes. The size of the brush is indicated by the number printed on the handle. The large brushes are good for covering large areas, while smaller brushes are good for smaller areas and detailed work. Some of the most common shapes are flat, round, liner, and filbert. The round brush is one of the most versatile brushes. If you're just getting started, I recommend you pick up a few of these in different sizes to start your brush collection. The price of a brush can vary depending on the type of hair. Natural hair brushes can be quite expensive. Synthetic brushes, on the other hand, are designed to mimic the performance of a natural hair brush, but at a much lower cost. These tend to hold less water and are a little stiffer but since the bristles tend to have a little more spring to them, they can be easier to control. I recommend you try a few different brushes until you find the one that feels just right. Now let's talk about paints and palettes. Paints come in two different grades, student grade and professional grade. They are available in pans, tubes, and liquid. Pan paints can be found in sets just like this one, perfect for when you are traveling or on the go. This is a set of 12 half pans that come in a metal box. It has two convenient mixing areas. If you're anything like me and prefer to create your own custom palette, you can purchase the individual tubes and squeeze a small amount of your favorite colors. A little paint goes a long way, so you might not want to use it straight out of the tube. I recommend you let it dry overnight or simply just use a very small amount and apply water to dilute it. 
swatching your colors is a great way to get to know them. Oh, and if you didn't know, you can find palette paper in pads just like this one in case you need an additional mixing area. Lastly, you will need water and paper towels. You will need a container of water, or even better, two containers with clean water and a paper towel. I like to place a waffle towel first and then paper towel on top. This helps me use less paper every time I paint. So here we are with our six essentials ready to paint. I have a dedicated table where I like to keep all my supplies out in the open so I can get inspired to paint anytime I have the opportunity. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the other videos in this series.